Hello, I'm Google. Welcome to your life. Today is beautiful. Please log in. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do with my picture? <laughs> Just come off the yard. I want to show you how this works. Okay. This is a courtesy. That's all it is. I won't ask you for money. Saves me shouting. Use the eye at the side. Use your thumb as a stop. Pull it towards your thumb. And you make five cuts in a count. You can all do this. You hold it in the other hand. Lovely carrot sometimes. You do that for the kids, they'll eat their veggies, I'm laughing at cat. When you peel a potato, it doesn't matter right-handed, left-handed, like a politician underhand. <laughs> All you take off that potato, any other fruit and vegetable is a thin layer of skin. You've got no waste to do it record time. Pineapple with a knife, you leave all the bits behind. Use the eye, you pull the bits out of the pipe. Use the same eye, you're going to make really good French fries. You know why they're so good? They've got three sides, not four. That's how the French make it. They use less oil and they cook quicker. And if you want to make them taste great, you leave the skin on the potato. You don't peel it, you wash it. Cook them like that with the skin on. And if you cook these yourself without trans fat, you wash them down with red wine, you'll never die, you'll live forever. Hold it in the other hand, it's another machine. That's a mandolin slicer. You let those slices go into hot oil and watch them go brown, you're going to love the chips. You hit that bar every time, and because you've got a very sharp moving blade, you get a clean, thin slice every time. You couldn't slice a potato like that with one of these things. You'll slice cucumber for cucumber salad. It'll come out as thin as that. Now my machine is so gentle, you'll peel asparagus without breaking the tip. I know this is a carrot. <laughs> you want to see how easy? Pull the handle. Hold it the side like this. Look at that. Go on, do it again. You've never used a peeler, sharp. I'll show you how you do this and they're yours. Take a few seconds. First you peel the carrot, and then you slice it. Now when you slice, you don't hold the carrot up in the air like when you peel. You put the carrot down on a hard surface. You press harder than when you peel. So the slices come out twice as thick as the peel. You'll slice hard Italian cheese the same way. You can't slice cheese as thin as this with a knife. Now you put those slices together like a pack of playing cards. You can all do this. You stack the one on top of the other. There's no trick, there's no skill, but you must use at least six slices. Don't take a shortcut and try it with one, it won't work. You fold the slices over. Hold the loose ends in one hand. You run the machine across the top. Now you can really see how sharp it is. Only a very sharp knife will do this. This is a true test of sharpness. Because anything less sharp will just tear it and break it. They're made in Switzerland, they're not made in China. They're made of stainless steel, they cannot rust. They're dishwashers safe and I promise you they never need sharpening. And if anyone thinks that's a special one, you can have that one, I'll use another one. They're five dollars each, they're worth every penny. They last a lifetime. You get two for ten. If you buy four for twenty and a lot two, you get one free. Now why would anybody want five penis if it lasts a lifetime? Friends. Yeah. You've got four friends, that's why. You've got Thanksgiving coming up, you've got all the holidays, you're not only saving money, you save a lot of time looking for gifts. How many of you? What's five? That's a way to buy. Let me give you a bag to put them in. Fifteen years I've been selling the same thing. Nineteen ninety four I was in the Daily News. You only want one, you've got no friends like me. There you go. One for five, five for twenty. Fifteen years.
are selling the same thing. 1994, you want two. 1994, I was in the Daily News. Three years ago, Vanity Fair. Julie Roberts on the cover of me in the middle. One for you. The best five dollars you'll ever spend. They're not cheap, you're not buying them because they're cheap. You buy them because they're good. You want the five. That's the way to buy them. Listen, when you buy five of these and you give them away as gifts, they're not going to be offended because they only got a peeler. They're going to be delighted to get the best peeler in the world. That's what it is. And they're going to think of you every time they go in the kitchen. And you're giving them something they can't buy in any store. One for you. They don't sell them in the store. In fact, you can't buy anything in any store in this country that's made in Switzerland for five dollars. If you found a packet of toothpicks made there, it costs you more than five dollars. The Swiss Army knife is nearly a hundred dollars. They don't make cheap things in Switzerland, they make good things. You're not buying these because they're cheap, you buy them because they're good and they work. It really, really mimics real, real driving. It really explains understeer, oversteer, not just explains, it demonstrates it. I mean, I could talk understeer, oversteer to someone here, you know, at a restaurant or something, just randomly. They're not going to know what the heck I'm talking about. But when I go to the game, these cars do that. ま、アクセルを踏めばまっすぐ走るし、ハンドルを切ればその方向に曲がっていく。there's so many variables that are involved uh, in terms of just the contact patch that the, the tire makes with the asphalt. The different types of conditions, obviously in Gran Turismo, there's snow and dirt and asphalt. And they also have to take into consideration the controllers. Uh, it's just, it's an engineering project that is Cousin Ori put it on, on par with the Apollo project. And as crazy as that sounds, I think he's probably right. It's, it's a massive, massive engineering undertaking. そういったものの一個一個を地道にというか部直にというか一つ一つ計算していくというアプローチを取るしかありませんでした。それその結果として車をまっすぐ走ってちゃんと曲がるようになった。結果から逆算したシミュレーションというかプログラムを作るのではな
didn't really expect I would ever build a bridge or a building, but I really wanted to understand the medium. I wanted to understand all of the right ways to do it and how far it could be pushed. In my mind, it changed how I looked at things a lot. Uh, I no, no longer saw things as being broken or useless. I saw them as waiting to be repurposed or fixed or modified in some fashion. All of the giant figures were uh, designed to represent different religions from around the world. I think what's kind of unique about the experience of these is from a distance you see a large silhouette and as you approach you can start recognizing that there are items in here that are familiar to you, whether it's a spring or a kitchen faucet or a tool. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot that people can relate to in these sculptures and I think it's uh, kind of amusing to discover these, these little bits. And I want people to just be drawn up into the magic of the sculpture and forget anything they know about reality. I want them to just think it's always been there and they discovered it and it was there for them. Uh, I think that really is, is the height of the artistic journey is when a viewer is unaware that this has, you know, 16 uh, outriggers underneath the ground that are holding it up. You know, they, they don't understand the, the engineering behind all that and they shouldn't. You know, if, if I've done my job well, they don't even think about it. So I think similarly to take a car out of the context of a parking lot and put it on a pedestal, you're forced to look at it as an artistic object and just see its, its physical characteristics.初めて免許を取って車に乗った瞬間の感動っていうのは忘れられないですね。あの自分の体に本当に羽が生えたように突然自分が行動できる世界がわっと広がるわけですよね。で、その気になればどこまでも遠くまで行ける。あのでその時の